Hello everyone, my name is Luffy Ledger. Thank you so much for watching this video. With me is Ikibana Sensei, Viola Yong. Thank you, Viola, for coming onto my talk show. Thank you for and, having me. Yeah, here. and sharing with the audience this beautiful art form of Ikibana. Viola is going to give us a demo, and as she's going to give us this floral arrangement demo, I'm going to be speaking to her about this beautiful art form that originated from Japan. Right, Viola, could you tell the audience as you're demonstrating your, your Ikibana through your perspective, right? What, what exactly is Ikebana for those who are new to this? Ikebana is an art form. It is not floral arrangement. It is also a meditative art which one practices, and I will use the word practices, to relate oneself to the material that's in your hand in relation to how everything falls into the place in the universe. Ikibana is a practice of discipline where we have to feel that we are connected by infusing our life into a cut material which eventually completes as a beautiful uh, floral piece of art that looks like it's still growing. So let me try and start my demo and we will carry it from there. Wonderful, I can't okay. wait. So, in Ikebana, there are the basic of an Ikebana arrangement evolves around three lines which is called the Shin, Soi and Hikai, translating man, heaven and earth. The container is a very important aspect of Ikebana because the container portrays as you, it's holding the water, is giving life to the material with, that's in our hand. And when we talk about the material, when we hold the material, it's important that we respect it for what it is and that it is a living thing. In return, we give life to it by arranging it in the water for it to look as if it is still growing where technically it is already cut. So the three lines, man, heaven and earth, is very apparent in how you relate yourself in life. How you focus, how you have a clarity in mind on how you, on how you would um, handle situations in life. Just watching you handle the flower with so much reverence and respect, you can see that this art form has a lot of contemplative depth. It's very sophisticated. Yes, like I said again, in Ikebana, you respect. Respect is very important. Without respect, you cannot appreciate anything. Mm -hmm. And without focus, you cannot reach your goals. So a clarity of mind is very important when you want to practice Ikebana. So I'm going to start with our first line. In Ikibana, you will find that we use what is called a kenzan for beginners to help you to to help you to position the uh, the, the materials. So the three lines, man, heaven, and earth, is always portrayed, portrayed as your main material. As your main material for giving you your focus. You also mentioned earlier to me about the seven basics that govern this art form. Could you share with us a little bit more? Okay. The very basic seven principles is <clears throat> line, mass, form, movement, color, space, and concept. So these are the seven very basic principles which one should always try to keep in mind when you are trying to create an Ikebana arrangement. Why do we need a line? A line gives you the road to heaven. So your line is always very clear in your materials. And when we have the three lines, all of them are never the same length. They must always be three different lengths 
And I won't go into the detail right now, but there is a calculation as to how you would cut the length in relation to your container. And when we pick up a material, we don't just look at it for what it is. The beauty of a material doesn't always just come from the front face. It can come from the back. It can come from just the butt. It can come from even just the leaf. Mm. So what it's trying to tell you is do not take things as face value. So how, did, so how did Ikebana originate? Ikebana originated <clears throat> as a form of meditative art started by a monk some 600 years ago while he was contemplating the struggle of this plant that was in a, in a stream struggling against the currents. Mm -hmm. And from there, he evolved Ikebana into an art form which was only displayed in the temple then. Mm. Ikebana was exclusively displayed in temples and then subsequently into the shogun's residence and then the royal family's homes. Only in the late 19th, early century did Ikebana become accessible to the public and the ladies started uh, practicing Ikebana. How is Ikebana relevant in our modern times? How do we distill such an ancient art form and make it practical in a day-to-day -day lifestyle. I think the practice of Ikebana is relevant in the modern day. We live a very fast-paced life. Indeed. Yes. I think if you practice, practice, and I use the word practice and not arrange, if you practice Ikebana, it helps you to slow down, focus your thoughts, and have a clarity of mind and feel that you can breathe that's why we talk about space we talk about movement we talk about the appreciation of the basic fundamentals in life and what we can find growing outside so a leaf and every single thing be it a leaf a branch or anything has its own individual beauty and I think that's one thing that's lacking in our modern day because we tend to, tend to run around as if there's no tomorrow. So, focus, breathe, relax, appreciate. That is very important to practice Ikebana. So now I have finished just what is called the three basic lines, the Shin, Soi and Hikai. These are the lines that portray basic fundamentals of Ikebana. They are your three firm lines to the universe. And in life, nothing is ever the same. Nothing stays the same. Life changes. You have a bud, you have an opening, and you have a full bloom. That is the journey of your life. On top of that now, after this, you have things that come into your life, which is called the mass. The mass can be anything. It doesn't need to be your main focus. It can be, in my case, I'm going to use a bunch of leaves, which are so different from what this is. This one, the iris flower is so clear. The mass of flowers is very messy, is very massive. But it is part and parcel of life because in life nothing is ever honky donkey, honky dory. Is that what you say? <laughs> and nothing's what it seems as it seems. Okay, we are surrounded by a lot of chaos. Yeah. But we have that uh, sense of being grounded and centered. I, I love I love what you did. Yeah, your explanation of it. You know, it makes it elevates it into a meditative art form that is applicable to our daily life and yet brings about you know the tradition and modernism blending it together in, in a beautiful harmonious synergy and it yet retaining the aesthetics of Japanese culture I right? think that, that Zen <clears throat> quality I think look what's important in Ikebana when it gives when you practice it is it must give you a feeling of peacefulness, mm -hmm. of being able to slow down your thoughts and appreciate 
things around you. I think that to me is the most important thing in practicing Ikebana and what is different from the rest of flower arrangement. Yes, yeah, it's really a beautiful perspective and philosophy. You know, I really respect what you do. See, she's actually much more than just a flower teacher or flor floral teacher or designer. She's like a spiritual master in a way. <laughs> I think for, for myself, Luke, I yeah. like to say that uh, I I took up Ike, I took up Ikebana because I'm a real workaholic mm -hmm. and I have very little time for people. I have very little time. I'm very impatient. Mm -hmm. However, I've always had the love for flowers. And my first encounter with Ikebana was at an exhibition where I said, oh, this is different. Yeah. The, 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 the arrangements I see is so focused and it's so clear and simple. And that's when I started on Ikebana and that was in the year 2000. Having said that, it took me another nine years before I could devote time to practicing it. How many years have you been practicing this art? <clears throat> Let me see. I think in reality to practice is about nine years. For an understanding, it took me at least two to three years to understand why my practice of the art was different from what I see in Japan. So I think the most important thing I'd like to, to share with you all is when the product is finished, you must try to make it look as if it's still living. Because that is what it's about. It's about life. It's about being able to appreciate beauty from the outside brought into your home. I think that to me is the most beautiful thing. And when it's finished, the person who's looking at it is connected. It speaks to you. The flowers, the leaves, each individual thing speaks to you. So this is just a very basic that I've done here which showcases an Ikebana arrangement. Of course, it has evolved and there are always a lot more modern looking arrangements with a lot more mass. That's another story. So, the basic, the basic Ikebana appreciate the simplicity of life and what it has to offer for you and what you in turn can offer to other people. Right, so it's really our connection to nature, to the universe, to ourselves, and in relation to the process of creating the arrangement. Yes. Wonderful. Thank you so much for Thank you. doing this demo and sharing with us your expertise. How can the audience find you? Where can they go to find out more or to attend one of your classes um, or demos? Yes, I think they can contact me on my, on my um, Ikebana email address which is lalayong at icloud.com I'll be placing her link in the video description yes. please. And you know, feel free to post any questions you'd like to me and I will try my best to answer it. Thank you for having me here. Thank you as well. Thank you. Thank you guys for watching. Please continue to watch as I interview other Ikebana practitioners. Thank you.